Good evening. First, thank you, Colonel Carrazas, and also many thanks to A.J. Artley and our public affairs team for another outstanding year in review video. <laughs> now, let me also say thank you very much for the warm reception that Sophia and I received coming in the door. That was, that was almost a little tearjerker that to actually reach a point in your career where all of your peers, friends, uh, senior leaders give you a standing ovation, that is, that is something I always remember. I'd also like to thank the leadership of the National Guard Officer and Enlisted Associations and the staff at the World Golf Village for the countless hours that have gone into the planning of this weekend's events. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight and especially welcome General and Mrs. McKinley, several of our former adjutant generals, General Harrison, General Burnett, General Titshaw, and I want to thank our guest speakers from this morning for their updates from the field and for sharing the strategic way ahead for our Guard Nation. General retired Gus Hargett and Command Master Chief retired John Harris. Many of you have been here at the conference for a couple of days now, and I hope you were able to attend the dedication of the marker at the Fountain of Youth last evening. It was a culmination of a vision from my former Adjutant General, General Titshaw. There's an agreement among experts that the site we dedicated it is the location of the first muster of citizen soldiers on the North American continent 450 years ago under the leadership of Pedro Menendez. Let me tell you, if you were there yesterday and experienced the event, it was not only historical, but we had reenactors there, and we actually, Captain Pedro Menendez himself actually led us around to the point where the first muster actually took place. <laughs> and if you were there, you could have shared in the moment and actually took pictures, and we're gonna send this to Massachusetts to let them know where the real first muster took place at. <laughs> Our association worked closely with the Frazier family to purchase and in place the marker that we celebrated, and for which we have great pride as the original militia force of our nation. General Titshaw, your heritage to horizons has come full circle, and we're proud to be partners in celebrating the 450 year anniversary of our nation's oldest city. If any of you have, haven't seen the monument, I encourage you to visit before you leave St. Augustine. Now to the good part here. Everyone knows that I've just completed my 90-day honeymoon period. They always say that the first 90 days, good or bad, belongs to the last guy. But I can tell you I inherited a lot of good, not only from the last 90 days, but from the entire year since we last convened here, May 2014. You saw the year in review video a few minutes ago, but what I want to take a minute to highlight I want to take a minute to highlight some of our activities and accomplishments from the past year. First, we've had unprecedented leadership changes and retirements. Literally, every senior command billet in the Florida National Guard has changed. We've had retirements. General Titshaw's retirement, General Tyre's retirement, and General Martin. And of course, Colonel Duren's retirement. CW5 Smith's retirement, Command Sergeant Major Roden, Command Chief Master Sergeant Lee, and we've had reassignments, Major General Bob Branion. New leadership assignments, General Eifert, General Cucci, Colonel Hageman, Colonel Gonzalez Kerr, CW5 Didge, Sergeant Major Young, and Command, excuse me, Command Sergeant Major Young and Command Sergeant Major Hosford. Command Chief Master Sergeant Gardner. And most recently, Command Sergeant Major Mendez. 
We've also had numerous other leader changes at the brigade, group, squadron, and battalion levels this year. And we've participated in several events that bear mentioning. Our state partnership exchange in Guyana and St. Kitts and Barbados. The retirement of our very last OH-58. Completion of the last battlefield weather qualification course and hosting the first Army Emergency Operations Center course at the Regional Training Institute. Vietnam Veterans 50-year commemoration at our Veterans Day ceremony. And as for training, the XCTC, Alaska Red Flag and Vigilant Guard, Ochi Freedom Guardian and Golden Coyote, and Yamasakura in Japan. It was only eight months ago that we prepared to protect our citizens in the event of the Ebola breakout in Florida. The Florida Guard led the nation in planning and readying teams to respond and our plans became the blueprint for other states and agencies. Our team was the nucleus of support for the governor's inauguration in January, followed by the National Guard Day in Tallahassee, where Governor Scott honored Major General Retired Bullard with the Governor's Medal of Merit. And just two weeks later, we were all back together again on Camp Blandon Parade Field for the Florida National Guard change of command. Through it all, we've conducted over 4,000 military funeral honors in support of our fallen. We've received support from the top ESGR program in the nation. Our education office was the first in the nation to eliminate the backlog of legacy payment, payments. We awarded four soldiers from the 53rd for subsidy aiding a citizen at the scene of an accident on I-75. We turned around the lives of over 330 young people through our Youth Challenge program. Camp Blandon won the Department of Defense Natural Resources Conservation Award for large institutions. We remain ready for this hurricane season and help brief the president on how Florida leads the way in domestic, op in domestic respond and operations. And these are just a couple of the points of our excellence. Deployments, redeployments, they've slowed down for a bit, but we're ramping up again and we'll have nearly 1,500 guardsmen deployed this time next year. We've redeployed the 107th MPAD, the 290th Joint Communications Support Squadron, and the 159th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron from its mission as the first ever theater security package in Europe. A number of our units have recently deployed or are preparing for deployment right now. The first of the 265th Air Defense Artillery, the 146th Signal Battalion, Dead 8, and 3rd of the 20th. Upcoming deployments include Bravo Troop, 153rd Cav, and the 2nd of the 124th Infantry, the 164th ADA, 1st of the 124th Infantry Battalion. And additionally, our Florida Air National Guard will deploy nearly 200 airmen for various missions ranging from engineer maintenance support to medical, signal, and space operations. Again, yes, you see I inherited an outstanding team shaped and mentored by many great leaders. And though I grew up on the other side of I-95, as I like to say, <laughs> I was blessed to have several leaders who personally mentored me. You see that rugged E-5 down there? <laughs> anyway, they helped me reinforce my deep gratitude, <laughs> my deep gratitude for the backbone of our force, our enlisted soldiers, and our airmen. They took the time to educate me and direct my career focus and they taught me the importance of mentoring my subordinates so that they fully understand what it takes to achieve their full potential. Because of this, I've learned early in my career is that I work for you. We place tag leadership philosophy cards in your registration bags when you sign into the conference. The slogan or motto on both sides of the card says, we work for you. We're making distribution of the cards next week to every soldier and airman in the Florida National Guard. We work for you is based on concepts that I embrace and live and that I expect each member of our team to embrace and live. It builds on our success from heritage to horizons and helps us become the hardest National Guard to get into and the one that nobody wants to leave. First, I work for you. I work for every soldier, airman, civilian, and family member of this organization. My wife, Sophia, also works for you. It is my obligation as the leader of this team to ensure that every soldier, airman, and civilian has what he or she needs to accomplish our mission, that you have what you need to train, 
and that you are physically and mentally prepared to accomplish your mission and you have knowledge of and access to every possible resource to achieve your full potential. I work for you. Now look to your left, look to your left, and look to your right. You work for each other, regardless of your rank. And you work for every soldier and airman in our formation, regardless of your rank. Global instability coupled with domestic threats and the challenges of our National Guard faces with sustaining relevance all mean that it's more critical now than ever for our team to be successful. And team success depends on individual success, but I'm not talking about senior leaders, but the youngest generation of Florida Guardsmen, most who aren't here tonight because they don't understand the value of professional organizations like Naugus, AUSA, AFA, and others. So it's up to you and I to work and educate them, our young soldiers and airmen, that I work for you, you work for them, we work for each other, to ensure that the success of the next generation. We collectively work for our great state and nation. We proudly safeguard our citizens and through our 17,600 plus deployments over the past 14 years, we have served the nation with, while demonstrating the highest degree of competence and character. We work for them. For our soldiers and airmen, we each owe it to them to provide a foundation of support through engagement, empowerment, and transparency to ensure their success. These young men and women are our future chief master sergeants, command sergeant majors, battalion commanders, staff directors, and for those who are not, it's up to you and I to help manage their expectations so that they may be successful as far as their potential will take them. It's that simple. Ensure that you're able to achieve their full potential. We work for them. So while the National Guard, the 54 TAGs, and Nagas are fighting, to fighting a strategic campaign to sustain operational credibility that we've worked so hard to achieve over the past 14 years, I'm asking you not to lose sight of our most important asset, our people, our soldiers, our airmen. Major General Hargett gave an outstanding update today in the morning session, and I expect leaders to remain current on our challenges and our way ahead, and be ready to engage in the public the media, and potentially the National Commission on the Future of, Amar of the Army. But we must balance this focus with continued development of our soldiers and our airmen, or it will be a fight we may win, but we won't be able to sustain it. Engagement, empowerment, and transparency. I work for you, you work for them, we work for each other. Engagement. Talk frequently with subordinates. Directly mentor them and define success. Show them what success looks like, both for them and for the unit, and provide a roadmap for them to achieve their greatest potential. Empowerment. Ensure that young leaders understand the commander's intent, and then empower them to take the initiative to accomplish the mission. They may not get there exactly the way you want, but they'll surprise you with innovation. Empower them through education. Ensure that they go to the right schools, and that they understand their benefits, whether it's education dollars for duty, employment or family programs, but don't let yourself become a single point of failure because you weren't there to make a decision for them. Educate and empower others to make decisions that are appropriate for their level of responsibility. Transparency. Make sure our men and women understand the process and key decision points of career management. There should be no mystery as to how command sergeant majors or squadron commanders are selected. But you must also have the fortitude to tell a soldier or airman why he or she was not selected for promotion and either help chart a course to get them there the next time or help manage their expectations if they have already achieved their full potential. Engagement, empowerment, and transparency. I know I've just highlighted some very basic leadership principles but these are important to me and I will reinforce them with every contact that I make with our soldiers and airmen. I ask that you also take the time to take care of our future, the future of the Florida National Guard. We work for you. I'd like to thank everyone again for attending this year's conference. I know we have some additional business and awards to present this evening, so I will turn this back over to Sergeant Major Acock. But God bless each of you and your families, our great state and nation, 
and more importantly, those who are standing guard for our freedom here tonight. Thank you.